Juneteenth was this past Wednesday. President Biden signed legislation making it a national holiday three years ago. It commemorates the day in 1865 after the end of the Civil War that enslaved people in Texas were informed that slavery was no longer legal. Banks, the post office, and the stock market all close on Juneteenth. However, Florida does not recognize Juneteenth as a holiday for state workers, not even as an unpaid day of commemoration, as it does for Robert E. Lee's birthday, Confederate Memorial Day, and Jefferson Davis's birthday. Governor Ron DeSantis issued a proclamation in 2020 recognizing Juneteenth, but has not done so since. Efforts to make it a state holiday have stalled in the legislature. Uh, Trebell, tell us more about the significance of Juneteenth and what do you make of it that we at least have not followed the national lead and not made it a, a state paid holiday? Well, the significance of Juneteenth is, is, is it's so important. Um, it signifies when people like myself have been aware that they are, are no longer slaves, um, they're, they're free. And it, it sends such a deep meaning that no one has control over your person. You can do whatever you want. You can really live this American dream or have a chance at really um, get at it. Um, but what we're seeing is anything but in speaking to um, civil rights leaders and activists um, in Florida that it's still a fight that they're fighting for, this freedom. And even with the Stop Woke Act, the restriction of being able to talk about diversity issues or what recently happened with being able to break those shackles from freedom um, is showing that it's still a fight that needs to be had and it's happening today. And there have been some attempts in the legislature to make it uh, an official holiday of the state. Uh, those have not done well in the last few years in the legislature. There's been several attempts and th there's not the will, there's not the political will, especially at the top, uh, as coming from the DeSantis administration, you're seeing the opposite of what um, you would lead to seeing that becoming uh, an official state holiday following the federal holiday. One of the other things that in speaking to civil rights um, leaders on the local level is the, the governor's use of the term freedom. They see it as like this perverse sort of um, co-opting of what it means to use that word freedom and the governor is using it freely in his agenda like he's he started a pack the freedom pack he fights for freedom in education and freedom everywhere else but for what it really means um, and this big impact in this country for African Americans to really be free and the power that comes in using that word, they feel that it's being um, co-opted and used um, for frivolous things or the feeling um, like, you know, manufactured discomfort or oppression um, in terms of some of the policies they're seeing the governor put forward. Uh, Jason, the governor does say that this is the free state of Florida, but his definition of freedom is not exactly the definition that many other people have. Yeah, yeah, it's it's Orwellian, and I'll give you an example of this. So, uh, you know, it's important to note that the first segment, the story about the the Stop Woke Act controlling what uh, what professors can say and teachers can say and teach about racism and that legacy, is absolutely linked to to this story about refusing to recognize Juneteenth. Um, but to give you a, another example of, of just how sort of Orwellian this gets is so another part of that law we were just talking about the in, the the Stop Woke Act, which is technically called an act relating to individual freedom, attempts to stop what private employers can can teach their own employees to so it attempts to it attempts to restrict what employers can say in diversity trainings in in uh, sexual harassment trainings those sorts of things and when that that law is all that part of the law is also being challenged in court and when attorneys for the DeSantis administration were pressed by Trump appointed judges about the scope of that they revealed that their goal here was not to stop uh employers from forcing employees to hear about this stuff who don't want to hear about it. Their goal was to stop employers from talking about this stuff altogether. Even employees who would want to learn more about diversity stuff, they didn't want those employees getting that opportunity. So, so much of this is designed to make sure that nobody hears any sort of different perspectives from the government's perspective, to make sure that nobody thinks about these kinds of histories or experiences in any sort of different lens. Uh, Daryl, the... I must say something, if you allow me, that... Okay. Uh... They, what you just, uh, Jason just mentioned, it was so outrageous that they, Florida lost the appeal. So the 11th Circuit uh, uh, upheld, the uh, a very conservative court upheld the injunction. So, uh, and another thing that I would like to uh, mention 
is the grounds for doing this are so absurd because the issue is that uh, collective guilt. That's the main thing be behind this in the walk uh, Stop Walk Act. Collective guilt is essentially a Christian concept, okay? We believe that we carry the sins of our ancestors, okay? And we, even out that I'm Eve, for that matter. So the idea that uh, on one side, this is to protect Christianity and Christian values and so on, and another, another to attack teaching about race because these bring collective guilt to people is insanity. So these are the type of things that, uh, uh, you know, this law poses for us. It's not only that it's in Constitution, in Florida law, in, you know, federal law, it's also incoherent. And, uh, and that is something that it needs to be enhanced, particularly, as I said, uh, that this is like Fidel Castro, everything within the revolution, nothing outside the revolution. So we can discuss everything that the governor tell us how to discuss, but we cannot discuss anything outside the limits imposed by the government. Uh, this is Cuba. one quick, yeah. Daryl. Well, one quick point. I mean, how you recognize Juneteenth is is, is uh, an important matter. Do you need a paid holiday? I mean, there are different ways to do it. We don't have a paid holi holiday for Abraham Lincoln. So, do we need one for June uh, Juneteenth? I mean, there. Are, yeah, it should be recognized, but there are different ways to do it. Cause it, it is a very expensive proposition when you think about it. Uh, having workers take the day off, all of the lost time in terms of state uh, work that has to be accomplished and the cost to taxpayers who have to foot this bill. Uh, so if we don't have one for Lincoln, do we, do we need one for every event? And so that would be my only uh, cautionary word here. We can do Juneteenth without having to have a paid state holiday. Okay. Well, Florida Democrats... I would only add um, to that point, and not to really um, hone on that, like speaking on the time on, and in the labor, think of the free labor this country has benefited from, um, for the enslavement of African Americans. Um, all of that time has been <laughs> given away. And so as far as compensation on the point of that, it's it's been paid forward in, so to speak. 